RMC is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your retro gaming with their joysticks featuring genuine Sanwar arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello, Hello cave, cave Dwellers! <laughs> Hello Cave Dwellers! Welcome to a show and tell. It's been a while actually since we had a show and tell. I've been busy off doing road trips. So we've got double the fun today. We've got <laughs> James and Colin from Let's Talk Retro. Now, when I heard you were coming with something from Commodore, I thought, I love Commodore. This is going to be great. What have you got for us? We've got this, the C64 GS or Game System. Wow, I don't know whether to thank you or kick you out, guys. <laughs> this is a system with a reputation. I think it's fair to say that, isn't it? It's not the most highly thought of machine. But um, I don't think I've actually seen one before. So it's nice to see no, one in person. No. Where did you get it from? Uh, I actually bought it off of eBay a little while ago, mm -hmm. um, probably a couple of years ago. Um, I mean, they go, they're quite expensive nowadays. They can go up to about £300, yeah. sometimes more. Uh, I think I can't remember how much I paid for it, possibly around two hundred. I think. Really, yeah. so still quite so a lot of money back bit, then. Yeah. Um, but it was it's boxed and in good condition, working condition. So I think we have the box somewhere. Yeah, do we do. do. Yeah. You got the polys and everything in there. Yeah. For the age, it's not go. bad. Commodore sixty four game system. Let's see what's on the front here. Instant fun for all the family. You get the console. You get the controller, which is the Cheetah Annihilator. Good stick. No, not really. It's not, <laughs> okay. It's not um, very good at all, really. And it comes with a games cartridge. Yeah, which James has there. And what have we got on there? We've got Findish Freddy, International Soccer, Flimbo's Quest, and Clax. Are any of those original titles, or were they on the Commodore 64 already? Um, I've got a feeling they're all ports. I think they're yeah, all, yeah. All, all existing titles. Yeah. Um, okay, before we get onto the game, so let's learn a bit more about this. When did it come out? Well, it came out in December 1990. Right. And it was only released in Europe, I believe. Uh -huh. And uh, it's, it's basically, it's a Commodore 64 board uh, oh. inside a different casing. You know, they just made a different casing, basically took the uh, cartridge port and moved it to the top. Mm -hmm. And you think someone at Commodore thought, this is a good idea. Yeah, quick, easy to do. Easy money. Get it to market. It's getting becoming old tech in 1990. Yeah. Um, just a way of making a bit more money out of the tech that they already out got. Out of the tech that came out originally eight yeah. years before yeah. in 1982. Yeah. So um, it was it was launched by Commodore to compete with, what did we have at the time in the uh, console market? Was the Amstrad uh, GX 7000. You think this was brought out to compete with the GX 4000? That's it. <laughs> mainly the NES, I think, and the Master System, maybe. Yeah, well, we had the Mega Drive the out Mega by Drive then. Mega Drive coming out as well then. As and well, the yeah. Super Nintendo wasn't quite out. I think that was... Was that out by December 1990? Maybe not quite. Maybe we'll have to double-check yeah. that. Um, but it's 8-bit technology. It wasn't yeah. going to compete with those. No. Before we get to the technical spec, though, let's just talk about how this thing looks. Okay. Do you think this was um, designed by Porsche? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. It's, um, what is it? It's, it's just a cream slab. It's the back end of a microcomputer that's <laughs> yeah. missing the keyboard, isn't it? Yeah. There's it's really just... no style to it. Mm. Um, I've got a 64C down here that we can compare it to. <clears throat> and um, now you you say that the board inside here is identical to a regular. So, so I believe. I'm not actually opened up to find out, but I've seen pictures and they yeah. seem to be. And that pretty much tallies up. It's the yeah. exact width of the 64C. Um, <laughs> just missing the keyboard. That's yeah. all it is, a 64C that's missing the keyboard. We will open it up a little bit later to confirm that, to see if there's any surprises yeah. inside. But yeah, from a style point of view, what have we got on the back here? We've got the same DIN video out. We've got the RF out. That's all that's on the back. Yeah. And then we've got two joystick ports and your power on the side in exactly the same place as the Commodore 64. But this isn't the first time that Commodore made an attempt at a console, is it, James? No, there was the Japanese release similar to this with a keyboard, the Commodore Max. Yeah, but that wasn't based on the 64, was it? That was, we're going way back to 82 with I the Max. I think it was VIC-20, was it? Or, That's right, it yeah. was VIC-20 based. Hmm. Um, and that proved, really, that you can bring out a a microcomputer based console or a conversion whatever you want to call it but still keep the keyboard and they did it using a, a membrane style mm. keyboard in a similar vein i think we've got a we do. Uh, philips g7000 down there which was 
in the US the Magnavox Odyssey 2 wired pads as well <laughs> yeah the, the pads don't disconnect right. that's a games console with a keyboard so it's entirely possible there's no reason why Commodore couldn't put a cut, a cut price keyboard on here how much was it when it came out? I think it was about 99 99 mm, 99 pounds yeah. yeah yeah so it was cheaper than the 64 although by that point, we had the Amigas out. That was Commodore's mm. flagship yeah. um, range. So the 64s mm. themselves would have been in the bargain. Bin. Yeah, and the sort of second-hand 64 probably wouldn't cost you a lot more. Probably a load of games thrown in as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're missing the main selling point, though. Go ahead. Next to no loading times. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you still have that in the Commodore 64 because your Commodore 64 has got a cartridge port. Yeah, um, fair argument. You could, buy might... the, you could buy the games, obviously, cheaper on cassette because you've got, you know, your cassette deck. Yeah, um, yeah, and if, if you wanted, didn't want the loading times, and you could afford a car, you could you could buy one and plug that in as well. So, when it came to loading times, the patient man always saved money. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing special about the cartridge here. It's it can use regular Commodore sixty four cartridges. Yeah. Can you imagine showing your Mega Drive owning friend <laughs> Wizard of <laughs> yes, War from 1982 yeah. on your brand new console? You're not <laughs> you're not going to be impressing anyone. Um, I'm sorry if you've got a soft spot for this console. I'm really not talking it up. I'm a bit of a Commodore Six, well, Commodore fanboy, but I'm not really got no nothing, nothing okay. not, no major. You're not too it. attached to no, it. No, it's just it's just nice sometimes just to stick a cartridge in that and play it on that rather than putting yeah. it in the 64. Just yes. but I remember seeing it advertised back in the day, and I say even back then I was you know, a real Commodore fanboy. But even then I realised what's the point? I've already got a Commodore 64. What's the point in that? You know, I can do everything with yeah. that and more with the 64. I think that's probably the reaction that most people yeah, had um, when they saw it. Yeah. Uh, James, do you remember seeing it in the shops? No, I, no. Don't, I don't remember any ads either. No. But I was well into my Amiga by then. Yeah, but you did do some digging today, didn't you? Yeah. To see if you could find any evidence of marketing. Yeah. Um, and what did you find? Commodore Format, issue right. one. There's a big picture of it on the front and also a four-page article inside all about how they were... Um, marketing it is saving time from loading. Right, okay, you should see that up on the screen now. So this is Commodore Format from October 1990. Uh, so it hadn't been released at that point, they're really hyping it up and there's some really choice quotes in here. I don't know if this is a spelling mistake or not, but it says insanity download. I don't know if that's supposed to be instantly download. <laughs> Amazing animated sequences as intermission screens, all for the death sequence, anything. And that's from John Twiddy. And I like this down here, it says the new kernel ROM from the console includes a new boot up screen when you turn on the machine. You don't have the old blue Commodore 64 basic screen, you get an animated screen telling you to switch off the machine and insert a cartridge. So Indeed. there's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. a difference. Um, and we've got some hype here. It says, how do you see the 64GS's chances when it's launched? And this chap here, this is Kelly Sumner. He says, I think it will become the number one product this year, depending on the amount of product the software houses can get onto the market, mostly because of the Commodore name, particularly the Commodore 64 name, as it has a fantastic reputation out there. 1990, guys. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit late, isn't it? It's, it just feels like too little, too late. You mentioned the Amstrad GX4000 mm. earlier, another flop based on, well, it was based on the 464 or the 6128 Plus, wasn't it? Mm. Amstrad did give us the courtesy of some graphics hardware enhancements. This is just, it's taking the mickey, isn't it? It is a bit, yeah. <laughs> it, it really is. Um, but I like the hype. That's a really interesting article. I think it's time we opened up the case and had a look inside. I want to see just what this is hiding, if it's identical. Do you want to place your bets? Have you looked inside before? So many caps are I've seen... places. Yeah. <laughs> I bet none. I don't know, yeah. I've seen some... Some images online, right. and they, so they do look identical. You know what to it'd expect. be interesting to see. And I'm assuming it, actually is. it works, does it? Yeah, yeah, it works okay. fine. Yeah, okay. no problem so at all, yeah. Hopefully, it will still be working when we put it back <laughs> yeah. together. Let's grab the screwdriver and we'll have a look inside. So, we've got the familiar sight here of Commodore cardboard shielding. This has never been opened. We uh, had to peel back the warranty sticker to get into it. Let's show it to you this way. I don't think we need to take it fully out. We can, we can just keep it like that. Um, and this is instantly familiar. The only difference here is we've got the cartridge slot, as you mentioned earlier, Colleen, mm -hmm. has been rotated 90 degrees. Normally it would stick out the back of the Commodore 64. Uh, we've got the shielded RF modulator over here. Um, and the tape deck and the, the uh, expansion slot are still here. 
Uh, but we've got all the familiar chips. We've got the 65A2, we've got the SID chip, uh, we've got the VIC2, we've got the GS ROM, which is socketed. So that's the the different part that gives you the animated screen. But that is pretty much the only difference we've got here. So there you go. Um, I don't think we were expecting anything other than that, were we? Yeah. And I think when they stopped selling these, they actually took the ones they hadn't sold and they took the boards out and they actually made Commodore 64 C's out of them from what I've, I've read on Well, they did, did they? Yes. So the excess stock, when they realised they weren't going to sell them, they continued to sell Commodore 64s and they just reused them. Yeah. I wonder if they had that in mind from the start. Surely not. No. Surely they <laughs> thought this was going to be a huge success all along. A game system is nothing without games. So we got the packing cartridge with it. Let's just remind ourselves what was on there then. Uh, Fiendish Freddy, International Soccer, Flimbo's Quest and Clax. Have you played them? Any of them stand yeah. out? Yeah, yeah. Um, International Soccer, that was one of my favourite all-time football games for, for years on the Commodore 64. Really? Um, I still think it actually plays quite well today. I mean, you know... Well, it does get really, slated but, quite often. Uh, I, me and my friends used to love it, played it continuously, so uh, yeah. it's one of my favourites. Um, Clax is the, uh, the puzzle, puzzle game, game which it? has been released on many systems. Yeah. Um, Find This Freddy is, is like a circus-style game. Uh, it's a bit like a summer or winter game style yeah, that's thing. You've got all the in, events, yeah, but based yeah, in the circus. Yeah. Um, Flimbo's Quest is a sort of platformer style. So you've got something sort of, of every game. genre, yeah. really, haven't you, to keep yeah. you entertained. That's not a bad packing. Fiendish Freddy I used to like on the Amiga. You were a big Amiga man, mm. weren't you? Did you never played it, though, on the Never Amiga. played it. It's quite sad, but... <laughs> Good game. OK, so the packing, uh, that, that scores some points. Yeah. Um, when we come on to the other games, though... They promised 100 games by Christmas when they released this, didn't they? Yeah. Do you know how many came out? For? Total 28. For Two. Christmas? Oh, not for Christmas. Oh, uh, four or something silly. Right, so 28 in its lifetime. Yeah. yeah. But some companies did make a go of it, didn't yeah. they? Ocean, Ocean were the main ones that really got behind it. Mm -hmm. um, this one doesn't have it on it. This is uh, Shadow of the Beast. <clears throat> but a lot of them did have a sticker on them that said they were com compatible with the game system. Right. So is this um, one targeted at all Commodore 64? Well, yeah, it does have to say on there. It says yeah, this cartridge is... Um, Plug straight, straight, into straight into any Commodore any computer. Com and yeah. Any is underlined. So. Yeah. And on the actual cartridge, we've got actually over here, it does actually say uh, 64GS. So right, so they've the put on the label. But the 64GS on an Ocean label doesn't necessarily mean you can play it, does it? No, that's because, like, for Terminator, for example, actually come up on the screen as soon as you plug it in, press any key to start. So, so Press any key to start. Yeah. And that specifically says 64GS on the label. <laughs> you can't actually play it because it just waits for you forever to press a key. key. That would have been so frustrating. Yeah, and, and many games were like that, the ones that, especially the ones that are already released, because they're probably thinking we've already got a back catalogue of games uh, on cartridges that are out there for the 64 that can be played on this. But quite a lot of them needed a key to be pressed for one player or two player um, or to set the game up in some way. Or maybe even played the game through, got to the end, got to the high school table. Mm -hmm. And it might ask you to type in your name and you can just forever wait for you to type in your just name. can't do so, anything, yeah. yeah. Yeah, something of an oversight. Um, you can't really blame the older games, but certainly in the case of those with it on the label, yeah. fully to blame. Yeah. Um, James... You like your Commodore 64 games, you, you, you buy them to this day, don't you? Um, I'm more of an Amiga guy. Okay. Colin's going to start an uh, epic journey of getting all Mastertronic. Mastertronic oh, games, okay. yes. But, yes. Um, so, but yeah, no. But we've got a couple of new are, ones that we've yeah. bought recently. This is what Colin has picked up, and these are still available today. Yeah. yeah. Brand new games. So you've got Sam's so, Journey Sam's there. Journey, that came out at the end of last year. And you've got Galencia, which I haven't played okay. Sam's Journey. I have played Galencia and I love it. These are not obviously targeting the GS specifically, but they work yeah, with it. They do work on it, yeah. So in this bizarre way, this completely failed console, because of the success and the love people have for the 64, is still getting new games. Yeah. Um, you, you may still have the problem of having to press a key to play it. Have you yeah. tried these? I've tried these. These work fine. These yeah. work fine. Yeah. So there you go. Brand new games for the C64 GS. It's bizarre. Um, the game that I bought most recently for the 64 was Sydney Hunter, which I did a review on last year. And um, yeah, just like any Commodore 64, slot straight in, he says. <laughs> slot straight in with a bit of force. There we go. Um, and, and you're away again. I can't remember if you need to press a key to play this one, but if you don't, you're away and you're playing. When it comes to playing games on these consoles, quite often 
I know that I do anyway. I, I get the things like the EverDrive, the SD2IEC for the Commodore 64, that's the, the disk drive emulator that you put the memory card in. Is there anything like that for the GS? Um, I've, got, I've got a multi-cart at home. I'm not exactly sure which, which version it is, but I plugged that in. But again, that says press F1. I think it was to scroll through the games and things like that. So right. again, useless to be used with this. So technically it works, Yeah. but uh, practically you can't use it without no. the keyboard. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Need I ask, guys, was it a success? No, it was a complete failure. <laughs> um, I think mainly due to, like I say, the amount of people already had Commodore 64s, they sold loads of those, so there's a big, big part of your market already gone, because why do they need one of, one of these if you've got a 64? Mm -hmm. um, also due to the games not, you know, library not being huge, it just, just completely failed. Mm -hmm. People that wanted to play games, they have their Mega Drive and NES and all those other consoles. Do you think Commodore learned any lessons from it? Probably not. They probably thought it was really successful. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably too busy sunning themselves yeah. somewhere yeah. to realise. Um, I, I think when you consider the CDTV came after, which yeah. was a system based on the A500, and they essentially just released a load of A500 games, things like Defender of the Crown. The CD32 just re-released a load of Amiga 500 again and Amiga 1200 games. So there were, le there were important lessons to be learned here. And they didn't pick they them didn't up. They didn't really know. <laughs> no. Well, guys, I, I know I've said a, f a lot of mean things about your console <laughs> today, but I am genuinely pleased that you bought it in to show me. You have agreed to let me keep hold of it for a few days, haven't you? Yeah. So I'm going to hook it up. Yes, you're going to share my pain. I'm going to do some <laughs> streaming with it and, and make sure you can see um, what this is capable of. I, I'm looking forward, actually, to checking out the, um, the packing game. We'll see just how good international soccer is. And yeah. I'll come back to you for a game on that, Colin. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, and I will because I have to return it to these guys. I'm going to take it over to them when I'm finished with it and um, appear on your channel, aren't I? Mm, yeah, that's They've right. Very yeah. kindly let me go and see them. So I'll take it back to them and, and tell us about your channel. Where can we find you? Well, we're um, Let's Talk Retro mm -hmm. and uh, we do several sort of videos a month usually. Uh, but the main one that we do is the Retro Gamer Show, isn't it, James? Yeah, we're up to episode 12 that we're coming out soon and we cover all sorts of retro gaming from brand new retro games to what's coming on so if you're always wondering what new events are coming up if you watch our channel we often feature all of them and we also do a little thing called games chart flashback in that where we go back and look at a chart and uh, we also as I say we have product reviews don't we as well so it's a great little show it's a, it's it's a nice show it's, it's like a, a magazine format isn't it right, yeah. yeah. you'll review a game James um, went up to Arcade Club in yep. Bury, didn't yep. you, and did a review of that on location. So it's um, it's a nice format. It, it's, it keeps me interested when thank I watch it. Much. So thank you. Um, go and check them out. Uh, you'll see a caption down uh, at the bottom of the screen now. Let's talk retro. And um, a link below to go and check out their channel. So check them out. James, Colin, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks for having us. And uh, see you on your channel soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching and take care. If you enjoy my content and would like to toss a coin into the hat to support the cave, then check out patreon.com forward slash retro man cave and join the official cave dwellers you can see on the screen now. Thank you for your support.